Greetings everyone and welcome to the channel. This episode I'm going to have a look at the worst of the lot. Men who overwhelmed with absolute power embrace the darker side of human nature. The Roman Empire existed for a long time and so there are many examples of the cruelty that dwell within the heart of humanity to choose from. As with any list like this, there is a wide margin for interpretation available. With that said, here are, in my opinion, the top 10 worst emperors in Roman history. Number 10. Maximinius Thrax One of the chief architects of the crisis of the 3rd century that almost led to the fall of Rome, Maximinius Thrax was easily one of the worst emperors in Roman history. He was the first of the barracks emperors, ruling from the frontier and military encampments. Ascending to the throne after the assassination of Alexander Severus, he took the Severan policy of enriching soldiers to its logical conclusion. He immediately doubled the pay of his soldiers when taking office. Spending virtually no time in Rome, he attacked the Alamanni unprovoked and conquered them with very heavy losses. He then attacked Sarmatia and Dacia without any reason or warning. He tortured and murdered anyone who crossed him. Even his own soldiers were not immune to his cruelty. A revolution against him in Northern Africa led to the Roman Senate supporting it. When the revolt failed, Maximinius marched his legions to the city of Rome itself, intent on purging the Senate completely. During the campaign, his men began to starve. They mutinied, murdering him and his son, along with his ministers. Number 9. Domitian Son of Vespasian and brother to Titus, who were both emperors in their own right, Domitian was never supposed to ascend to the imperial purple. Vespasian had put all of his energy into training and preparing his older son Titus for power. With the sudden death, however, of Titus, Domitian became the master of Rome. He was a very heavy-fisted autocrat. A devout pagan, he persecuted anybody who did not follow his faith without charity. He murdered many politicians, former consuls even. Anyone who crossed him was put to death. He was a brutal tyrant who started the first large-scale persecution of Christians and Jews. Popular with the population and military, the senatorial order largely bore the brunt of his wrath throughout his reign. Despite this, he was an excellent administrator and expanded the border, seeing to the improvement of its defenses. He strengthened the economy and revalued the Roman currency. These acts counter much of the negativity of his reign. He was assassinated by members of his own court. Number 8. Tiberius Ironically, Tiberius was both the best and the worst of Rome. I even placed him on my own top 10 list of the best emperors. He was most certainly a great conqueror and ruler of the empire. He was, however, a deviant who did things that I will not speak of in this video. Needless to say, age or sex meant nothing to Tiberius, and he was well known for his very many sick predilections. These crimes alone would place him on this list, despite the good deeds of his rule. His desire to never rule the empire at all was also a huge liability. Later in his long reign, he abandoned Rome to his Praetorian prefect Sejanus and the Senate to rule. Since Sejanus, his prefect, was a bloodthirsty killer, that also lands squarely on Tiberius as emperor. He was responsible for all the actions that happened under his reign. While Sejanus was ultimately killed and Tiberius had not directly ordered much of these killings, it was easy to understand why the line is blurred when it comes to Tiberius and making him one of the best and one of the worst. Number 7. Septimius Severus Be harmonious, enrich the soldiers, scorn everybody else. This quote from Septimius's deathbed sums up the man and his attitude nicely. Rising to power during the blood-soaked civil war known as the Year of the Five Emperors, Septimius was a soldier first. He routinely persecuted Christians and Jews during his reign, killing many thousands. He completely ignored anybody outside of his army, seeing them as not worth the time or effort. He killed senators and elites without care, ruling with an iron hand. He deferred much of his responsibility as emperor to his Praetorian prefect. His excessive pay of the military led to a much greater tax burden on the ordinary citizens which was unsustainable, and his legacy of successors would keep increasing this pay, much to the ruination of the empire. This forced him to debase the value of Roman currency, leading to even greater inflation. He died of natural causes while on campaign in Britain. Number 6. Diocletian 
The man who ended the crisis of the third century had brought stability to the empire was also a brutal persecutor of Christians. There is a reason it is referred to as the Great Persecution. He tortured and murdered the impious as he saw it, believing that they were responsible for the problems of the empire. His attempt to rid the empire of Christians was easily the worst and he went much further than many of his predecessors in that regard. He cut out tongues, fed people to lions in the arena for the crime of not renouncing their faith. He burned churches, scriptures, and seized the funds from said churches for his own treasury. Many leading men of the clergy were tortured in the most brutal fashion before being executed without any trial or defense. These martyrs of Christendom led the Christian faith to form ranks, uniting and within only a few decades to become the dominant religion of the empire. Diocletian failed to stamp out his enemy, ultimately abdicating, the first emperor to do so to help pave the path for his successors. He died of natural causes years later. Number 5. Elagabalus Becoming emperor at just 14 cannot be good for anyone. With Elagabalus, he took the title of emperor and living god to heart. Sex and rampant murder, of course, the usual for anybody with a god complex. But Elagabalus wanted more. He wanted to change Rome completely. Long before Christianity would replace the paganism of the empire, Elagabalus wanted to get rid of Jupiter and elevate his own sun god to the divine head of the empire itself. As it can be imagined with these changes to the Roman religion, that they did not go over very well. Known to prostitute himself to both men and women in the imperial palace frequently, he married five women in his short reign. He was massively incompetent and rumored to smother his guests to death with pillows. He appointed his lovers to governmental roles with no experience to help manage the empire, which of course led to economic problems and serious issues across the board. Realizing his cousin was very popular, he had several attempts to murder the boy, feeling threatened. When these failed, he then pretended that Alexander was dead, attempting to lure out his Praetorian guards' true feelings about him. The guard demanded that he immediately present Alexander to them at once. He did so, fearing their anger, making sure to point out that Alexander would never be emperor. The Praetorians then proceeded to murder him and make Alexander Severus emperor anyways. Number 4. Caracalla. The son of Septimius Severus, Caracalla continued the tradition of taxing people into poverty and enriching his legions. Unlike his father, he ruled not with an iron hand, but an iron axe. Having his brother Gaeta murdered in front of their mother, no less, to secure total control of the empire was chillingly sadistic. He went further, hunting down everyone, and I mean everyone, who worked with or for Gaeta. You knew him, you died, period. He even worked to expunge the record of his brother, making sure that it looked like he never existed, removing him from history books, melting down coins, destroying statues. It became a crime to even utter his name in public. With Gaeta out of the way, Caracalla was free to kill and torture anyone he liked without any reason. A brutal tyrant who knew the true art of cruelty, he loved to travel the empire, bringing his particular brand of sadism to everyone across the realm. He gave every male in the empire citizenship so he could tax them, increasing the base massively to pay for his ridiculous military budget. The soldiers loved him, and that was pretty much it. Word of a play in Alexandria poking fun at Caracalla murdering his brother made its way back to the Twisted Emperor, who promptly ordered the leading citizens of the city murdered before sacking the city for several days. Clearly the man had no sense of humor. It's ironic in the way he died was actually quite funny on the side of a road while he was relieving himself. Number 3. Nero Nero fiddled as Rome burned. Well, he really didn't but his reputation for insane cruelty and extravagance easily made this story believable throughout the ages. Ascending to the throne after the murder of his uncle Claudius, Nero was the last of the Julio-Claudian dynasty. Used as a conduit for his mother Agrippina to rule, she did so for many years. Indeed, the first years of rule of Nero were productive and happy. In many ways, it was an example of the best side of enlightened despotism on display. Nero, however, wanted to rule in his own right and saw his mother as a roadblock to seeing this happen. He was unhappy in his first arranged marriage that his mother had pushed for, so he tried many times to assassinate his mother before finally succeeding, staging a shipwreck. When she successfully swam to shore, she was executed, and then it was claimed that she had taken her own life. He had his first wife exiled and then murdered when she was out of sight. Now Nero was free, 
free to build and spend like any emperor before him. His lavish lifestyle nearly bankrupted the empire. After the Great Fire of Rome, Nero saw his chance to build a massive golden palace for himself in the ruins. It was rumored that he even kicked his second wife to death. He persecuted Christians, tortured people, and had them murdered by wild dogs. He took his own life before he could be executed, leading to a year-long civil war for control of his throne. Number 2. Caligula Caligula once ordered an entire section of the crowd to be tossed in the arena as the prisoners had run out and he was bored. He was trying to make himself a living god, a huge affront to the early empire. He wanted to make his horse consul. He tormented his uncle Claudius regularly. He had members of his family exiled and murdered. Caligula slept with other men's wives at public dinners in full earshot of the other guests. Building a huge floating bridge at the Gulf of Bay just so he could ride his horse across was one of the many bizarre acts of Caligula's reign. He marched his legions to conquer Britain before ordering them to gather seashells to celebrate his victory over the sea god Neptune. He often murdered entire families of his enemies before killing the victim last. There are many colorful examples of which I cannot relay here on YouTube. The only mercy was his reign was short at only four years before he was finally assassinated by his guards. Number 1. Commodus The worst emperor in Roman history took a healthy and prosperous empire and drove it head first into the ground without a care in the world. Edward Gibbon marked the decline and fall of the Roman Empire from the reign of Commodus, and he was right to do so. Inheriting the empire from Marcus Aurelius, Commodus quickly set to work on doing the life's work of his father and all the men who came before him. Not only did Commodus love the gladiatorial games, but he actively participated in them. This act offended literally everyone in the empire, from the commoner in the street to the elite in the palace alike. Pre-wounding his opponents before the games began, he tormented and tortured and effectively executed them in front of the crowds at the Colosseum routinely. He loved killing animals for sport in the arena, much to the disgust of the onlookers who were forced to watch or face the wrath of their ruler. He spent the empire into near bankruptcy, ignoring governing and trusting the administration to cruel and evil men who embezzled and settled their own personal scores routinely. He played them against one another, creating a near continual chaos at the highest levels of government. A bloodthirsty maniac who had no issue personally killing to satiate his bloodlust, he was ultimately strangled to death in his baths. His horrific 12-year reign undermined the empire, paving the path for the coming crisis years. So that will do it for this top 10 list. Do you agree with the ordering, or would you have mixed it up a little bit differently? Please comment below and let me know who you think deserved the top spot. Also, please hit that sub button and the notification bell to see my future videos. Thanks for watching.